We need to occupy every airport. We need to occupy every border. We need to occupy every ICE office until those kids are back with their parents. We're not going to win if we don't stand for anything. That was Democratic congressional candidate Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez this week calling on activists to occupy ICE offices. Ocasio-Cortez, who ousted longtime New York Congressman Joe Crowley in last month's primary, is just one of the candidates pulling the party left ahead of the November midterms. Last weekend, California Democrats dealt a blow to another party elder, endorsing progressive state Senator Kevin DeLeon, over four-term Senator Dianne Feinstein. The 51-year-old De Leon is the author of California's sanctuary state legislation and backs a single-payer health care system. Wall Street Journal columnist and Fox News contributor Carl Rove served as deputy chief of staff and senior advisor to President George W. Bush. So welcome, Carl. How divided are Democrats going into this election? Well, increasingly divided because uh, you, you just touched on a couple of them. We, we've, we've seen this throughout the primary season that in cases of uh, races where the Democrats had a shot to win, they've thrown it away by uh, going hard left. Uh, the key example to me was uh, uh, Nebraska, too. Uh, this is the most Democratic part of Nebraska. It's a part of the state that Barack Obama carried, that Hillary Clinton did well in. They had a Democrat congressman until recently. He was trying to get the Democratic nod back again, and, uh, and he'd have a shot in the general election. But the Democrats instead went hard left with a woman named Kara Eastman, who is in favor of uh, Medicare for all, uh, free, free college, a guaranteed job with a guaranteed paycheck. And in a Midwest district like that that is sane and sensible, even a lot of Democrats are going to find that too much to go for. All right, but, you know, Carl, look, Ocasio-Cortez, it seems to me, has a point, at, at, at least on one thing, and that is enthusiasm and energy and passion. And if you stand for something, you're going to motivate people to vote. In 2010, as you know, the response from Republicans to President Obama was driven in part by that kind of passion. What it, 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 people, Republic, uh, Voters know that Trump is going to have the veto authority. So, but the Democrats may be motivated enough to put a check on that, and some of these issues may not matter as much. Well, maybe, but look, she comes from a very liberal district that is not representative of the country. And when she goes out to campaign around the country, she, she's going to raise questions that local candidates are going to have to raise. In Dallas, Texas, in the 32nd Congressional District, Colin Allred is going to, if she comes in and campaigns for him, people are going to start saying to him, do you agree with her that Israel is conducting an illegal occupation of Palestine? Uh, there, are you in favor of free jobs, free health care, free, free college? Are you in favor of that kind of an agenda? Are you a democratic socialist? Now, some of that stuff will work well if you're in, you know, San Francisco, but it, to win the House, the Democrats are going to have to win a lot of seats in places like Pennsylvania and Michigan and Illinois and Texas and and and, and the parts of California that don't like how they vote in the in the Bay Area. Well, so, but, you, but, I, but Carl, then what you do is you just don't invite Ocasio Cortez or Elizabeth Warren into those districts. You invite I don't know Bill Clinton or somebody who's more popular in sure. those districts. Yeah, but look, this this is a this is a. Uh, sentiment that is grabbing, uh, that is gaining strength inside the Democratic Party. Here in Texas, they nominated a rock star named Robert Francis Beto O'Rourke for the U.S. Senate against Ted Cruz. I think it's it's hilarious that in Texas we have the Anglo Robert Francis O'Rourke running as Beto, and we have the uh, the Hispanic uh, Rafael Cruz running as Ted. But that's the way it is. But Beto O'Rourke this week came out in favor of impeaching Donald Trump. Now, that may be popular inside the confines of the Democratic Party, but it is not going to be popular in a red state like Texas. Or take Scott Wallace in Pennsylvania 1. This is a district held by Republican, won by Hillary Clinton, and they nominate the most left-wing guy who's running in the primary, who turns out to have contributed $300,000 to organizations that support disinvestment in Israel. And it is the, 30, it, the district has the 38th highest percentage of, of uh, a concentration of Jewish voters of any district 
district in the country. So, right. yeah, they, 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 look, it, it, it matters that you stand for something. But if what you stand for something is hard left politics and you're running in sort of middle America, then the Democratic Party is not going to win as many seats as it might otherwise have won. One of the things, though, we've seen throughout the special elections uh, in the last 12 months is that the Democrats have outperformed what you would have been the expectations for their voter turnout. And that's in part generated by enthusiasm. A lot of this, and we saw this in Virginia in particular, is anti-Trump enthusiasm. Why isn't the best Democratic argument were it to be simply something like this? You know, we are going to put a check on President Trump. You want checks and balances? The Republicans aren't doing it. We're going to put the check on Trump. Uh, that would be a good strategy. But instead, they've got uh, for the people and uh, an increasing numbers of their candidates are defining their agenda by adopting left wing positions, Medicare for all, free college, guaranteed jobs and so forth. But you're right. If they ran a sort of centrist, we're the, you know, we're going to work together, Republicans and Democrats, to achieve good things for the country. We're relatively moderate centrist liberal Democrats. Uh, we're not nuts calling for impeachment. We're not calling for the overthrow of the government. They could win a lot of seats, but that's not the kind of candidates they're nominating in, in some critical races. But you're right. If they were smart, that's what they would do. Take, for example, your old stomping grounds, Wisconsin. Uh, the Iron Stash, uh, who is a left winger running in Wisconsin, <laughs> won. Uh, it turns out to not only be left wing, but turns out to be a deadbeat who couldn't either pay back loans to his former wife or pay his child support payments. But he sounded good to Democrats in that district because he was the most left wing. <laughs> All right, Carl, we'll see uh, how this evolves in the coming months. Thanks for coming in.